Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Edge Technologies here today. Uh, just wanted to, we're going to take a few minutes to show off some new technology. I'm Rick Bauer. I've been with Edge Technologies about 26 years now. Uh, and this product that we're getting ready to show is actually um, the most exciting product that I've actually shown in the last few decades. So we're getting ready to show some very interesting technology. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to make a patent on this technology, so we're going to share this with everyone in regards to uh, Swiss machining. So what we're showing today is the modification of a Turbo 338. And John, if you don't mind, go ahead and roll this video here uh, in regards to what we would consider traditional machining with a Swiss machine and now with the new RS technology. Uh, as the Swiss world has grown in size, not only in diameters, in capacities, in speeds, in Z-axis travel, the headstocks have gotten longer and also the sheet metal has gotten much bigger. So the hardest part of bar feeding is the transition zone. The zone where the material leaves the machine and actually achieves the back of the spindle. So anytime we're in this zone of moving material, this is where we find a lot of trouble with vibration and harmonics. And so we've got running up there on the, on the screen, as you can see, the traditional versus the new. And so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing here and what's different. This is our core standard flagship product, the Turbo 338. What we're actually doing with this product is through COVID, it gave us a chance to re-engineer the norm, what we used to always think was the right way to do it. However, We've now got the right way to do it, and that's by doing the RS technology, revolutionary sliding technology for Swiss lathes. So the unit itself is very similar to the unit we've sold for 26 years. What we've done is we've lengthened the unit to the front, both 400 and 600 millimeter versions, uh, and we've changed this telescopic device or the device that separates the machines so that we can get a very direct connection and have much better support. So we're going to kind of walk through what we're doing and why we're doing that. Uh, this RS technology currently eliminates the need for what we used to consider an axial shift device or pusher extension, something that would make the bar feeder longer for Swiss to non-guide bushing mode applications and also the ability to move from a collet to a non-collet or guide bushing application, the, the non-guide bushing mode, chucker mode. So what we've done is we've extended the unit to the front. Now we're going to install the bar feeder, even though the physical unit is a little bit longer. We're actually going to install the bar feeder closer to the back of the machine, and that's going to consume less footpr footprint. So the actual installation length is going to be shorter than a traditional bar feeder. That's because now as we've run the video, we've seen that usually the headstock is here. Now the sheet metal, the bar feeder is much closer to the back of the lathe. So we have a very small transition zone. So let's go ahead and kind of show off this technology. What's unique is this red piece in the rails are certainly demonstration only. It's got nothing to do with the technology. This is what's gonna happen now is we're going to mount this movable steady right to the back of the headstock of the Swiss lathe. This gives a roller steady device. We're taming the material right at the back of the spindle, and we're always got a consistent diameter change from the channel to the spindle. You can consider this a sliding spindle liner if you would like, because the size never changes, and we never have any available open room through the telescopic device that would make this jump rope effect occur. So if we're moving in Swiss, everything's staying in sync, as such, which you can see, it's still the exact same system. We still have a mechanical synchronization device. We're still using a steady. We are oiling this device and keeping it in size. So uh, I'm going to set this down just for a second or kind of hold it off so you can see when we change. We would simply make a very quick change. That's how when you change the channel, the device would come out and change with it. So this tube, extension tube, would then change with the channel set as part of the nose. And if you don't mind coming on around here, I'd like to show you, go ahead and 
I'd like to show you what the inside of the bar feeder now looks like because the change is unique to the fact that the tube is actually sliding and is part of the channel set system. So if you could kind of sneak right in here, you can see that this tube now is actually inside of the bar feeder instead of external. And so now we have this full support that's transferring right into the machine. So this is really a very interesting device. So what, what does this device really do? What does it mean? It means if we're going to start looking at 32, 38 millimeter Swiss applications that we might want to remove the guide bushing. Maybe it's a tough application. Maybe it's hex or brass or copper, something that would require extra support, but we would have a lot of harmonics and vibration. This is now the game changer. This is now the patented solution for those tough applications. So the Turbo 338, the standard unit's not going away. It's still another one. This is just a golden bullet that we've added to the, to the lineup here at Edge. And really, uh, this is a revolutionary technology that's going to be a game changer for those applications. So it was a quick demo. It was a really easy and functional thing. I just thought maybe we'd throw it out for a few quick questions if anybody wanted to talk about an application or, uh, or something that they could see a, a benefit on this system. So is there, are there any questions that would be evolved around this? Okay, so the question is back here where the sliding tube ends, and I'm going to have you zoom right to this area. So where the sliding tube ends in the channels, is there any open area? And right now you can see it's tucked up really close, just a finger length difference. Uniquely enough, as that pusher gets inside of there, now the pusher is supported within the channel set in a tube. So the void or the distance that we've always used to have here is gone because it's consumed with inside of this tube, which is now part of the channel set. So we've moved that inside of the bar feeder instead of external. Can it be retrofitted to existing bar feeders? Unfortunately, it cannot because the design starts with the extrusion of the bar feeder, which is now 600 millimeters longer. So unfortunately, the, the bar feeder would have to be ordered this way.